before I didn't have the time because all I had to do was point at corporate. <laughs> Y'all the problem, okay? It wasn't them, it's me. Listen long, long enough, you can love me. Hi ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, I'm back for another vulnerable get ready with me. <laughs> clink, 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 mm-hmm. We're back for another get ready with me and I'm super duper duper excited because this was a little bit different. We're gonna be doing, obviously, my get ready with me's always are like a two in one. We do a wig, we do makeup. Now the wig, the hair, y'all see this hair? <laughs> I love this bob. I have to be honest, when I first saw it, I was like, hmm, how is this gonna look on me? Cute, <laughs> it's cute, girl. The way, the way this wig came, is it really is pull it out the box and go sort of wig. The face is an all stick foundation sort of look. So very much giving, oh, very much giving skin. You see? Wow. This get ready with me is, it perfectly links with this wig. Now let me tell you something. I have been on YouTube for seven years. I have been doing wig reviews for seven years and all seven of those years this wig brand is has been one of my goal brands to work with i i don't know why i feel like i'm about to cry again why am i so emotional today oh i already know you already know what time it is i felt like if i work with this brand i made it i want to say thank you to rpg hair for providing this wig to me and sponsoring this portion of this video. I'm so elated to do this wig review and they did not disappoint. I've been on YouTube for seven years and I quit my job nine months ago to be a full-time YouTuber and social media influencer. And in this Get Ready With Me, we're going to chat about how it's been going so far and just some advice that I've learned since quitting my job. So, cause how many months did I say? It's been a whole gestational period, girl. It's been nine months. I have a few little tips, just from little on me, girl. Don't, don't be acting like, girl, it's little on me. I don't know nothing. If you wanna see a little bit more information about this beautiful hair and you wanna get a coupon code, a coupon code with my name on it, girl, I've arrived. <laughs> Please keep on watching and I'll be back. Let's get into some girl talk and do this face. Now let's go ahead and pop this box open. Your wig comes in the RPG hair wig box and inside that box, of course, these are the gifts I received, a baby hair brush, a rat tail comb, some flyaway balm, and an elastic bag band that you're able to remove, and of course, a service card. Now, of course, this is your wig. This is the Ombre Bob Curly Lace Frontal Wig. It is 14 inches long, 180% density, and this hairline is giving, friend. Look at this hairline. It has a bleach hairline, HD lace, and a clean hairline, which means it's pre-plucked and ready to go, flattened for you, friend. So we're gonna do our ball cap method. Now, my ball cap method ain't your ball cap method. We got different ball cap methods because my ball cap method means I don't do nothing, girl. You probably gonna see my wig cap through this, but we gonna fix it towards the end. So I just do a wig grip as well as a wig cap over it and that's it. But as you can see, this hairline is giving. So I'm gonna use some lace tint. Um, the lace is HD, but I always like to tint my lace. I use the Kellen Derrick lace tint and I just spray it down and blow dry it with a blow dryer on warm to set in the color. Now look at it now. It looks real good. It's going to melt into the skin very, very well. But the first thing I need to do is reflatten the hairline because when I blow dry it, it just be frizzing the thing up. So we need to get this thing back where she needed to be. So I'm going to use my Andis hot comb just to go ahead and lay her down a bit and get her reflattened to her original state. So look at that. It looks real pretty. It looks really, really flat. And all I need to do is cut off this lace. Girl, we are halfway there. So when I'm cutting off my lace, I like to use my Annie shears. And I'm just going to pull back the hair just so I don't chop off a whole side of my wig. And now I got an asymmetrical wig. I don't want that. So I just clip the hair back. And I'm going around the ears. And I'm cutting off a little bit of the hair on the side because it hangs over my ears a little bit. So I got a tiny head, so y'all know the cap's a little bit bigger. Also cut some of the hair off the front as well. So in order to apply the wig, we're gonna use the Wig Dealer Spray. Now this Wig Dealer Spray is amazing. If you haven't tried her, I would say try her out. I'll leave a link for it down below. But it gets real, real sticky, and we're gonna do two layers of the Wig Dealer Spray. We're just gonna lay this wig down, and y'all watch as my scalp trim 
Okay, let me get my words right. Watch as my scalp transforms. Transforms. What am I going through? <laughs> so I'm going to use the back of the rat tail comb just to go ahead and melt that in a little bit. This was super, super duper easy to apply. But to make sure this lace actually melted, melted down, I spray over the lace just to make sure nothing is lifting up and we're completely melting into the skin and i want y'all to look at these it looks so good now you know i wouldn't be me if i ain't do no little teeny tiny little infant hairs on my wig so i like for my baby hairs to be really tiny and instead of using gel to lay them down because that's what i used to do i'm going to use the wig dealer spray now this is a little bit harder but it gives a much softer look and let me tell you something the way they pre-plug this wig it makes the baby hairs look so natural now you know that you got a good pre-plug wig when your baby hairs are really really fine and they look super natural and i like mine to look you know like more like just edges and less like baby hairy because they just don't be looking right on my forehead so i like to do four sets of baby hairs i only like to do four i would like to just do two on the ear tabs and then two like basically on my temples one thing I like about doing baby hairs on the ear tabs is it stops the ear tabs from popping up as much. So as you can see, that has been laid down and all we have to do is melt it into the hairline. I like to use an, uh, what do you call these, elastic band, just to lay it down and get it really, really flat. Next, we're gonna do this hair. Now, one thing I noticed about this hair is because it is colored, it seems like it's a little bit drier. So we needed to add a little moisture in this thing just to get this hair going. Now, you could wear this hair right out of the box, but y'all know me. I always gotta do a little bit too much just to get a little bit out of it. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my Shea Moisture Mousse just to go ahead and apply the mousse to the hair and encourage these curls to keep going so i'm going to use my evolve 572 brush and i'm just going to brush through the hair just to make these curls clump together and encourage the curls to look less more like less like machine curls and more like natural curls if you know what i mean so i'm using the coconut curls what was this called um what do i call it it's the coconut curls ors ogx OGX coconut curls dry cream I don't think I should have used that on this hair I should have just left it with the mousse but you know I always do too much so I'm just going to continue using the mousse and combing through the hair with my 572 brush just to clump together the curls at the top I started doing some finger coiling just to encourage the curls to clump together a little bit more and you couldn't see it but i was trimming off the ends this bob seemed more asymmetrical and y'all know i'm not an asymmetrical girl i'm a straight bob sort of girl so i decided to just clip off the ends on the front a little bit just so this is a more of this is more of an even bob so i can get more fullness if you know what i mean you see oh it's gonna be so cute now i'm gonna go ahead and use my Dyson blow dryer and I'm just going to diffuse this hair dry now I diffused on really really high heat because girl I was rushing I was trying to hurry up and get this dry because drying curly hair does take a minute especially when you clump the curls together so I dried it in about maybe 30 minutes and after that I wanted to reveal the hairline and look at that hairline baby it is melted the only thing I need to do was cover up that cap I used my stick foundation in NC50 just to cover up the cap that's showing up around the baby hair parts. Um, and that did a pretty good job. Now you can kind of see it, but if you're too close, girl, back up. Give me 50 feet. You don't need to be that close. We just flattened the middle part and that's it, girl. We didn't have to do much. Now, if you do the ball cap method, girl, you are in there like swimwear. I don't know if anybody says that anymore, but you are in there. Now now we can go ahead and separate the curls as you can see they're fully clumped together and that's just how i like it now a couple of them were still wet i probably should have let them dry a little bit longer but girl my patience was wearing thin. so i did separate the curls now i could still tell that i probably needed an oil or something to moisturize the ends because it still felt a little bit drier but once i separated the curls and fluffed the hair out 
this was the look. And I'm telling you, I was obsessed. My husband loved it. I was walking around like, girl, this is me. This is my hair. So if you would like to purchase this wig, I'll leave a link for it down below. I'll also leave my coupon code for $10 off down below. It is a mirror bob for $10 off. Now let's go ahead and get into doing this natural face. Okay, y'all, let's get started with doing the face. The hair is done. We got ourselves a cute little curly bob. Now we can go ahead and get started with the face. And what do I wanna talk about? I want to give an update on leaving my job. Why am I so nervous? But I want to give y'all an update on leaving corporate for social media. I left my job in October. It is August. July, August. It's been nine months. It's been a full gestational period. And a lot of things have grown and changed. And wanted to give y'all like just like a little update of how that was going because whew, the face that I'm gonna do is mostly like stick foundations. This is a um foundation routine that I used to do when I went into the office. Let me start with one of my bases, I already moisturized. I use almost all Origins products because my face has been going through it, friend. I had a breakout after coming back from Vegas and it took me forever to get rid of those bumps on my forehead, but as you can see, they're gone. And basically I had to stop using vitamin C. Okay, y'all know I like to use a headband to get the hair out the way. Now we can go ahead and start with the base for the face. Now I'm gonna use the Unseen Sunscreen Super Goop SPF. It feels like a um, primer. Oh, my face is greasy. I probably should have removed some of that grease because my face is greasy. That's okay. On top of this um, Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen, I'm gonna use the NYX Bear With Me Prime Set and Refresh 8 Hour Hydration Spray. I wonder if, why did I make that face? Let me make it cuter. Okay. So while my face dries down, I'm gonna tell y'all what I'm gonna use for the face and I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it. I'm gonna use the Bobbi Brown Stick Foundation in Golden Skin for under the eyes to highlight. For bronzing, I'm going to use the, uh, the Bobbi Brown Walnut Skin Foundation Stick as a contour and then for like the areas of my face that just need some correcting, I'm gonna use the MAC Studio Fix Soft Matte uh, Stick Foundation in the color NC50. I already talked about why I left corporate. So I was in corporate for about eight years. I'm gonna start. Oh girl, that's a lot. Don't tug at the skin. And I left because first I had been doing YouTube for I think six years. And it's been, I've always had to balance doing YouTube and working. So I left because, well, girl, it was a lot of work to do both. And eventually I started making more doing this and I was stopping myself from making money working full time than, uh, you know, versus, you know, going into the office, making an hourly pay, doing as much work as I was doing. I was remote, so I was working from home, but even then I couldn't, I couldn't balance the two. I think it's hard to explain how much work it is, not only to be a social media influencer, but somebody that does wigs. Um, it just takes a lot more labor, and wigs was my main promotion, so. Uh, when I started doing YouTube, I started it back in what, 2015? Was it 2015? Yes, it was 2015 when I started doing wigs. So back then, um, I mean, I knew I could get uh, I could get paid off of YouTube, but I didn't know how much it was. And I still was on a path of having a career and being a clinical mental health counselor and still working in corporate and entertaining that as well. So I was thinking like, I've always had multiple jobs. I was always doing that. So I was thinking like, oh, I could do this for a minute. I could balance working incorporate and doing YouTube and going to school at that time to get my master, master's. But eventually I stopped going to school and then eventually I chose to leave corporate, which is the best choice I ever made because girl, things are going great. That's what I need to get back to. <laughs> girl, I was going on and on. Let's go ahead and blend this with the Sonia Castric sponge. I think for me, leaving corporate was the best choice I ever made because first 
I'm a much happier person. I'm gonna tell y'all right now, I was up. I was, my attitude was terrible working in corporate. It was bad. Um, I'm sorry to, to the people that I knew. <laughs> I was happy, unhappy in corporate. I'm a person that likes control. And there was little to no control working in corporate. You can try and work your way up the ladder, but you can get into a position, think it's gonna be one thing, and then it ends up being something else. And the next thing you know, you're stressed out, you're tired, and you're stuck. So for me, I didn't like that. So I ended up, when I left, it was the best choice I made. I was immediately much calmer. My anxiety went down, all of that. Now, I've been doing this for, what, seven years? I've been doing YouTube for seven years, but now that I'm doing it full time, I've noticed a couple things. I love doing YouTube, but I will say this, I think what, I think one thing that people make it seem like is uh, doing social media is soft life. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. If, I think being successful in social media, especially as a black woman, is um, a little bit more complicated, especially on what you do, but I think the amount of labor that is expected of black women is much higher. I'm just gonna say it. I think the way social media, the social media landscape is now, especially on YouTube, there's so many people doing that work that they almost have to, people have to find you. So if you are looking into um, doing YouTube or doing um, anything social media, I do think, you know, you do have to keep in mind that this is not something that is guaranteed. You just won't have one video that pops off. That's very rare that it happens. I didn't have a video that popped off that was like, okay, I'm here, I made it, now I can quit my job. If you quit your job as soon as you uh, pop off on social media, I think it's a terrible idea. I, there are some people that say like, oh yeah, you should do it, chase it. You know, when you get successful, when you have a viral video, just go, no. I think social media is, I'm running my mouth and I hope all of this makes sense. I think social media is an amazing tool to use to get to where you need to be, but I would say invest a lot of time, research, all of that before you choose to do this full time because it is not easy and it's not consistent. That's one thing that I've learned. I've known that, that's why I kept my job <laughs> all these years. I'm gonna add a little bit more coverage under my eyes. I've kept my job because I, you know, as a woman in my 30s, I wasn't looking for instant greater. I'm looking for stability, so stability was important to me, and if, if I didn't have stability and consistency, I wouldn't have quit my job. It just wouldn't have happened. I held on probably much longer than I needed to. If you were looking to be a social media influencer, keep your job, invest your time, or cons consistently do both. Find time to do both, and be realistic with the time that you have. Commit to your job, do well, at your job because you never know what can happen. I'm gonna use uh, the MAC NC50 foundation. I just put it on the flat part of the sponge and I'm just pressing it in. How it's going right now is great, but I, right now, because I'm trying to find a schedule, I'm trying to find a schedule on how to, when to upload, stuff like that. I don't even do as much as some of these other girls do and I be trying to figure out how do y'all find the time. But I literally work six and a half days a week. No days off, ever, not one. And if I take a day off, girl, it messes up everything. Um, social media is a machine that requires you to engage with it as much as possible to get the best output, to get the best growth, to get YouTube recommendations. Uploading three times a week and being consistent is really, 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 really important. You don't have to, but I do think it's recommended to at least do once a week, but like, Depending on your type of content, my type of content, I have to do like three times a week. So far, this is looking good, friend. I'm adding a little bit more um, contour around the nose. I'm gonna add some contour on the eyelids because I'm not trying to do eyeshadow. Um, like I said, I've been doing this for seven years and I didn't chase getting subscribers. I'm gonna tell y'all something right now. Hold on, let me get my power. If you chase subscriber count, you're gonna be selling yourself short. I'm gonna use the Laura Mercier um, translucent powder. I think this is too light for my skin tone, but I'm gonna use it anyway. I'm gonna use it to set under my eyes and around the mouth. But I think people set themselves up by trying to chase uh, views and subscribers. Views are important, but I think what's most important 
it is um, finding a subject matter that you like that you can see that a population cares about. So if you're gonna start a YouTube channel, like for me, I've always loved wigs. I've worn wigs since I was 18 years old. So this was organic to me. Um, so coming on YouTube and doing wigs was like, it's because I loved it. I still have my first video on this channel. I just did a wig video because I found a cute wig and I wanted to tell y'all about it. And then I followed it up like with more videos about hair that I loved. Um, oh, I need to go into the question that the girl asked me because it, it connects to this. I The question was asked in my Q&A about any tips for uh, micro-influencers. What does she ask? Okay, so it was Kiana H. that answered this question and I promised you I was gonna answer this question. She asked, I'm curious about how you went about securing wig collaborations with various companies. I can see that a lot of time, hard work and editing goes into your YouTube videos without giving away any industry secrets. What's the process like when you're being sponsored by a company versus just putting out your own YouTube content? So first, um, I didn't start wigs for sponsor content until maybe I would say years years into doing YouTube. I can't even remember the amount of time, but I've been doing sponsor content for five years. How it started was I was doing wig reviews for free. I think mine started with uh, like synthetic wig videos and then I moved on to um, like human hair videos and I think my first video, I got paid like $50 or something like that for a sponsorship. And how it started was I started with first buying my own wigs. I was spending all of my husband's money. <laughs> there was a point in time where I quit all of my jobs and I was like real sad at home. And uh, I think I had a part-time job at this time. I was spending money on wigs to do reviews on them. So I spent money on hair anyway. Like that was always, girl, when I was in school, it was... Uh, Y'all remember you get your check from school from your re your loan refund and I would spend my money on hair Okay, and then I would come to YouTube and I would do reviews on it eventually Brands if you leave your information on your page wig brands will reach out to you Okay, even the ones on Amazon that were like hey if you do a review I will I've never done that before because I, I don't like that um, But they'll reach out to you and say hey, do you want to do a review for free? and I'll send you free hair. I was happy with that because girl, I was spending so much money on hair. So I started doing that and then after that, I think I had one wig brand that reached out to me and was like, hey, you know, we'll, I finally gave them a rate and they paid it. No, $75. I think that was my first wig review was like 75 bucks. My blush be blushing, baby. Oh my God. Why don't y'all tell me this is too much? But yeah, I started off doing that and then once they started reaching out to me, basically the wig brands start to reach out to you. You also, cause I've seen Gina Janine say this, you can reach out to those brands yourself. If you see a brand, you can say, hey, if you send me some free hair, once you start to get a following, maybe 500, 1,000 subscribers, you can start reaching out to them with just saying, hey, I'll do it for free. Because once you do it for free, other brands will see you. Now there's a certain point where you, you start to get taken advantage of, um, and you have to figure out where that is based on your analytics and your engagement and all that type of stuff. You can see whether or not you're not getting enough out of it and you should start charging a rate. You can basically start seeing that by how many people are reaching out to you. Like if you get a lot of people reaching out to you, then it's like, okay, I need to start charging a fee. That's how you go from free to like getting paid. She asked what's the process like when you're being sponsored by a company versus putting out your own YouTube content. When I do my reviews, I like to give y'all as much information as possible so you can figure out whether or not you want to purchase it. I'm not trying to sell it to you, okay? I just want you to know like this is what the wig is like, this is what you get. As you can see, I'm very detailed in my reviews. The only thing that is a different process is writing down all the information that the brand wants me to say. It's usually all the details for the wig and if they're promoting like a certain part of the wig, like if it's clear lace, if it's this, if it's that, then I'll have to let y'all know that type of stuff. But other than that, there really, girl, there isn't really much of a difference. I do think I have more fun 
with doing my own wig reviews because I only have to think about what I want to do, not what the brand wants, which is, you know, also important. You also, because you're working for somebody. So there really isn't really much of a different process. Like I have my notes in front of me for this wig. I also have notes for like the other wigs that I review. So it's kind of like I've noticed for me, when I'm working with brands, there isn't, they don't have like a lot of requests. There isn't really, there isn't any industry secrets. Wig reviews are wig reviews, child. Really, there's no, you can see that most people do their wig reviews the same way. For me, um, especially with my full dedicated wig reviews that are just about the wigs, I try to be so detailed it is painful. Those videos take four to six hours to film because I try and like show y'all beginning to end what the hair is like. So it takes like four to six hours. Like a video like this will take about from beginning to end. Let's see, I started at 11, it's now 2.35. So this will take about four hours. The other one would take about six. Like it's four to six. It, it be taking a long time, girl. These, these wig videos, girl, they ain't for the fate of whore. <laughs> what was I about to say? Did I get far off subject? I think I'm gonna go back to what, what was I talking about? I can't see, I need a, I need a rubric or I need to do something or nothing at all because I can't be, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the face using the lip bar um, palette. I'm gonna set, this is the Boss Moves palette. I'm gonna use this blush and this bronzer to set the face. I wonder if I wanna use this or like the Honeymoon powder. I use this because it's, it's quicker. So let me use my blush first. Ooh, this is pretty. I do think, um, I do wanna, like for those of you that are looking to be, to quit your job and be influencers, um, like I said, take your time and research the business side. Don't just research doing um, YouTube and how much money you can make. It's all about what's the business? What is working with brands? Whatever brand you, whatever business you wanna get into, if you do wanna do sponsorships, cause not everybody does sponsorships. You can be a commentary channel. Whatever you wanna do, research the business side. If you're looking to make a living, getting paid off AdSense, girl, <clears throat> ain't gonna do it. AdSense is basically like the ads on your video. Most people don't make money off that. I would say like if you're looking to do collaborations and sponsorships, look into figuring out like what lane can you be in? What brands can you work with? If your lifestyle, what are you open to working with? What do you like? What you don't like? What makes you unique? All that type of stuff. Also for the businesses on the business side, figure out like writing, how to write an email to a brand, how to pitch yourself and also how to create a media kit. That's really, really important. All that stuff, I do think on your journey to becoming full-time, I think it's important to verse yourself in that. Even if you get to a point where you blow up and you're like, okay, I wanna hire somebody to manage me, you wanna know how they're gonna be doing their job so you can look over them because people get screwed over by management all the time. And sometimes you can do that stuff yourself because I did mine by myself for many, many years. Many, many, many years. I know a lot of people say do what you like. I'm gonna disagree with that, but with a little bit. I'm gonna disagree with just doing what you like. I think doing what you like is important, but I also think researching doing what you like is important. So research, if you like to make coffee, like what type of coffee videos are really, really popular? You can do that within your range of things that you like to do. Find your audience, like, People say your audience will find you. They don't always find you because social media is very, very saturated. And there's a lot of people that do what you do, but you wanna make sure what you do is different from what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? So your audience, not only you're finding them, but they're finding you. You're meeting each other. You're becoming soulmates. Find your niche, but then look up, like what, what are people looking up within my niche? Like are people looking up how to make certain types of coffee? You know what I'm saying? Like. What is their favorite sort of coffee? Can I recreate this or whatever? I do think it's important to do research. I think just doing YouTube off of vibes or doing social media off of vibes, if you have a goal of being, doing it full time and making a living off of it, I think it requires um, more research 
I'm putting on my earrings from Amazon. I think it requires more research. Do it to find your audience and then go from there. What was a motivator for me in the beginning of doing social media and doing YouTube, people don't watch your videos when you put up your first, second, third video. That is amazing. You do not want nobody watching your first video because most likely it's gonna be bad. <laughs> You don't want nobody watching you for your first video. You want to be able to get those jitters out. Talking to the camera is like, it's a skill that you have to kind of, that I, I personally had to hone in. If I keep my first videos up for a reason, if you watch my first videos, I was like stiff in front of the camera because it's like, you're talking to a camera and it doesn't feel like, you don't even know your audience. Like I know some of y'all now, so it feels like I'm talking to y'all. Did I already put on my bronzer? It feels like I'm talking to y'all. So I feel like I have an audience. Like I know that I'm talking to y'all. When you're on YouTube and you're talking to nobody, it, when I was talking to nobody, it was weird. It was scary. And I was thinking like, if somebody finds me, oh my God, I look so stupid. You get in your head. But those first videos are for you to get comfortable. Like get comfortable, sit down, talk to the camera, become one with seeing yourself on camera and seeing yourself on screen. I'm gonna do my brows. I already did my brows. Y'all know I be doing my brows before I get on camera. It was way too dark, but now I'm gonna go ahead and color them in just a little bit more. I'm gonna do the, uh, I'm gonna use the Espresso Micro Brow Pencil right here. And one thing I will say is, I'm gonna get to the emotional side. One thing that I learned that I did was I started to, I need to put some powder. Cause my eyebrows is oily, friend. I'm gonna put some, um powder on my eyebrows. One thing that I did, and I still do, I, I'm not, I do compare myself to people on YouTube, like their growth. I have been doing this for seven years. If I wasn't centered <laughs> and I didn't live in reality, <laughs> I feel like I would be upset about where I am or be like, man, why, why, why am I not further? Cause I did have that moment where I felt defeated and I felt like, man, you know, like nobody's watching. But I first had to look around at the community that I have and be appreciative of the community that I have. Also, I had to see like, this is exactly what I wanted. Where I was at the time is what I wanted to be right now. And where I am right now, I'm so elated about. Like I'm elated where I am. I'm happy to have this community. I love how we communicate. I did things, I'm doing things my way and I'm happy about it. So don't compare yourself to other people because you're you. And it, being you is the best part of having a presence on social media because you get to be yourself in front of other people. And I love that people love me for me and not me because of her. You know what I'm saying? My hand is shaking. I hope y'all care about this subject because I don't know. <laughs> I'm just running my mouth. My journey here on YouTube right now, I can say I do not have a social life at this time. I was up this morning thinking about it like, oh my God, like I don't spend time with my friends. I haven't seen my family in a long time. Like it's just been me working. And sometimes I wonder like, am I making the right choice um, doing this? And I think I have a struggle finding balance, but that's always been my struggle. I've always worked more than I've socialized, which is not healthy at all. And I'm trying, I need to go to therapy for that because I've always had like an anxiety around not having money. So I always would work like crazy. Didn't matter what was going on, girl, I was going to work. I had one moment where I had like a depressive breakdown and I didn't work for like six months. Like I literally laid in bed um, for a long time. So grateful <laughs> for my amazing husband, but I did have a breakdown because I had done this so long. I'm so afraid of getting back to that place. So I need to slow down. I thought that my level of exha exhaustion came from having the job I had. What I realized having the job that I love is that it's not the job girl, it's me. <laughs> It's me. I got a problem. I have an I have an anxiety around money that I need to work through. Um, and being a person, being an independent person, and I struggle with feeling like I don't like depending on anybody. I don't like needing people, which is probably why I don't have. Girl, I'm over here having counseling for you. <laughs> Always have wanted to just need myself. Why am I gonna cry?
Somebody needs to go to therapy. Y'all know I be crying though. So this ain't new here. If you've been here before, you know I be crying. I'm gonna use the contour making bets from Lip Bar. I'm just gonna use it on the eyes. But you know what I'm saying? Like I, I miss my relationships and I just need to find a way to consistently, you know, I don't even know if I'm keep this in here. <laughs> I just need to find a way to consistently uh, get back to that. And I think when I went to therapy before, my therapist had told me, like, you're in your 30s. That is normal. Even though it's normal, I, didn't, I don't want it to be my norm. I noticed I am much happier when I have a community around me. And, but consistently doing it is hard for me when I'm always like, I can work, I can work, I can work, I can work, I can work. Mm, mm, mm. I'm trying to get to the money. But that's what I've, I've learned more about myself because I think sometimes, I think sometimes we can think like, if I had this job or if I could do this, that I would be happier or I would feel more fulfilled. I've learned that I thought that was it and that ain't it, friend. I need to learn balance. I do think it has, like me finding my career that I love has opened up, has opened up me thinking like, oh, it's not what you do. It's who you are, girl. You need to go back to therapy. You need to work out your uh, traumas. But what doing this has helped me to see myself more. I do have more time to spend time with myself, to think, to investigate, to question how I think of things. Before, I didn't have the time because all I had to do was point at corporate. <laughs> Y'all the problem, okay? It wasn't them, it's me. <laughs> Girl, they doing construction in the hallway. Ciao. That's the end of that emotional conversation. I don't even know if I'm gonna keep that in there. Y'all may just see me go from no makeup to makeup. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and put on some mascara. I'm gonna use the um, Smashbox Super Fan Fanned Out Mascara in the color black. I just read that whole thing because I was thinking like, oh my God. Anyways. I think the face turned out really good and it looks like skin. I'm so happy about it. So y'all let me know. What are they doing in the hallway? Y'all let me know what you think down below. Oh my God. All in all, I can say it is success. I'm the happiest I've ever been, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm just always open to being critical of myself. So I don't want y'all to think I'm not happy because I'm the happiest I've ever been. But I realize what things I need to work on. That's all I'm saying. But I am ecstatic. I am in love with what I do. I'm in love with my office. There are days where I'm not editing, where I'm thinking like, I want to edit. I want to film. Like I be thinking about it. There's like an impulse to do it. Even if I'm like super exhausted, I just love doing this. And I, I wouldn't go back to corporate if you paid me. Well, they do pay you, but you know what I'm saying? You couldn't pay me enough to go back, girl. I'm not going back to the strip club. <laughs> I'm just so happy I made that choice, best choice I ever made. Um, hopefully I handle that responsibly, girl. <laughs> oh, I was trying to do my lips. Oh. What am I gonna do with my lips? I say a little lip gloss. I'm lining my lips with the, I just look directly into my light. And oh my God. Okay, do my lips, these lips, this lip pencil is the NYX Line Loud Lip Pencil in Rebel Kind. I love this brown, it's so pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and use, um, I'm gonna use the minted lipstick. Just throwing a little bit of that color. In the center, y'all, I always do this lip combo. I'm gonna do the MAC Peach Stock Lipstick right in the center. Ooh. Do I wanna do a lip gloss? I think this is a glossy day, right? Just a little bit of gloss, just a little bit. Um. Let me take this off. Uh, oops, no. Okay, do I wanna spray the face down? Oh my God, this face is giving. Mm, 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 mm. Let me spray my face down. Okay, one, two, three. Ooh, 
So my face has been sprayed down. The face is really natural and pretty. I do the same sort of like routine, a little blush, a little bronzer. But this is more like a skin-like sort of look. You wanna see? I'm about to run to Target because I need to learn how to take breaks. And the break means go to Target, have a little bit of fun, and then I need to come back and do some more work. So um, this is the face. Oh my God, and look at that hairline. Ah, sickening. Ooh, look at that. Oh, look at the blush, like creamy glowiness. Oh my God. I feel like I'm gonna put a little bit of blush in the middle of my nose. Do I have one? Y'all be saying that look a fool, but I don't care. I think that's everything. I'm gonna jump up. I'll see y'all in the vlog because I'm gonna take my vlog camera with me. So um, I'm gonna put on my A for Always Amira. This deodorant is so annoying. But I got my necklace on, my earrings are from Amazon, and I'm probably gonna throw on some jeans. I feel like jeans today. Girl, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video wasn't too much or like, I don't know. I feel weird about it now. I always get feel weird when I get personal. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Hopefully the video was helpful for those of you that are looking to get into social media um, for a tiny little micro-influencer micro -influencer that is a blip in the matrix, girl. So anyways, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. I'll leave everything that I use down below. Thank you again for RPG hair for providing this wig to me and sponsoring this video. I love you all, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.